What's up guys, this is Black Scout Survival and today we're going to be going over the uh, hand drill which is a primitive fire making technique. <clears throat> it is the uh, one of the most difficult techniques uh, because you know you actually have to use your own speed and pressure but it is the simple to create the kit components because like the bow drill you need a bunch of different materials. Uh, you need uh, two man-made materials to make a bow drill set and that being a knife and a piece of cordage. Whereas a hand drill, you really can just do it with nothing, uh, maybe a sharp rock or something like that. But let's talk about the components. First, you'll need the spindles, and these obviously look different than the spindles of a bow drill. They're longer and they're smaller. You know, ideally, you want your spindle to be the length, uh, I mean, the width of your uh, pinky, ideally. If it's too small, you'll drill right through the board of the uh the fireboard the other thing is is that you can see there's a law larger and smaller one here the smaller it is the more rpms you're going to get which means the more speeds you're going to get and uh i typically like those better but the uh thicker the spindle the one that goes almost to your pink pinky size is going to be the best on your hands as far as you know pain wise because <laughs> uh doing the hand drill you'll get different uh, blisters and stuff like that. You'll use muscles you didn't know you had. <coughs> but any kind of pithy wood or like type of stalk will do for a uh, the spindle for the uh, hand drill. You know, stuff like cattail, stuff like that works great. Anything that's pithy. Okay guys, another thing about your spindle is that I really like them being about, you know, two feet long with about 20 inches uh, to 34 inches is ideal you know the longer the longer you're going to be able to set a driving motion on it the other thing is it needs to be pretty straight and uh, free of any twigs or anything sprouting off the side of it the next component <coughs> will be your fireboard and the fireboard can be at the uh most i'd say a half inch thick you know any any uh thicker than that you're gonna have some difficulty but uh <clears throat> i'd say right at right at a half half inch thick or a little under you know not anything that's real thin you're gonna drill right through it <clears throat> but this is uh you know both the the components need to be very dry you know you can't go take a piece of moist wood and stuff like that and, and think you're going to create a uh a hand drill the, these Need to be extremely dry okay guys a few good woods to use a hand drill to make for a hand drill fire set is going to be uh sotal yucca poplar cypress willow and basswood just to name a few uh cedar also works well you got to find out what's good in your area <clears throat> and just uh see what you have there to use for a bow drill but like i said needs to be extremely dry and a soft density wood too soft you'll drill or the items will crumble right in front of you so you want to make sure it's just you know good soft wood all right guys so there's two positions for uh the hand drill and one is your you know you kind of do like a kneeling position similar to the bow drill and you'll you know basically just go down the stalk like this I don't really like that way. That way is good if you don't have a lot of strength, you know. Uh, it's easier to do. I like to do the sitting position where basically you sit like this and just uh, drill down. That's my preferred method. I like this way a lot. It's just a lot more comfortable. But uh, let's go ahead and get to burn it in the, boat, uh, the hand drill. All right, guys. So you can see this is a fireboard I've already used, but basically you're going to come in about a quarter inch from the end of the board to actually drill in your next divot. So I'm just going to go right here and just kind of work my knife around. And this is just going to give you your uh, spindle a starting point when you go to burn it in. I think that's good there. All 
All right, now guys, that's, that hole's burnt in now. Now we're just ready to notch it out. And to notch it out, I'm just gonna use a salt my saw from my multi-tool and kind of just go halfway. You can kind of bisect that divot and just go down the middle. And you know, you want to come in just, just shy of uh, halfway into your hole. Like that's good right there. And now we're just gonna kinda carve that out into a piece of pie. And this is why multi-tools are useful, you know what I mean? You can pretty much do everything you need to do. And I kind of take mine a little deeper in the, in, on the underneath than going straight up and down because that allows more oxygen to feed into that coal. All right guys, so you're gonna to need to put a, a catch pant underneath. You know, we got our notch, our hole drilled out, but you wanna get it right underneath that notch to catch your coal. And I kinda of just put my foot on it like this, kinda of lean in. And when you're doing the hand drill, you wanna start off by just warming the board up. You don't have to exert a, exert a lot of force. You're just gonna you know, give some pressure to heat it up. Go a few times, you know, I said about two or three times, full rotations, and you're gonna go the entire length of the spindle. You need to make sure you're not picking your spindle up and up whenever you're going down it, because you'll lose all the heat, because the friction is very hard to attain and you don't want to lose any of it. And if you notice, I'm using my entire hand length. A lot of people will do this and, and just use, see, that's how you lose your heat, but just use their palms like this. That's a bad method of doing it. You'll tear up your hands and you don't get as many RPM as you need. You see, we're already getting a little smoke. And you see I'm using the whole, my whole hand. When you get smoke, you speed up and use your whole hand and give downward pressure. Check our ember. All right, we got a good burning ember there. Now you wanna make sure you don't wanna destroy it, so just tap it out. Actually, for this, I'm gonna need to use something to knock it out. Is it stuck in there pretty good? Just to hold that together. All right, no need to panic. <coughs> just let it keep burning. You're gonna take it and dump it, this ember into your tinder pile. Cup it up.
All right, guys, so that was the hand drill fire. I just want to go over a few tips before I sign off. A lot of times when uh, you first start doing the hand drill, you'll wind up polishing the tip, and if you keep on doing it, it won't really be effective. So you can either take your you know, knife, like from your multi-tool or something like that, and, and shaved off the polish section, the charge section, or you can either rub it on a um, hard rock. And that's just what I do, I rub it across a rock. <laughs> the other thing is, is whenever you're using a, uh, when you're, you're making your divot, you wanna start off with a fresh divot, because usually each hole only lasts around two to three times. And when you start a fresh divot, it actually helps you, uh, it makes it quicker. You can actually start it quicker than starting on a fresh, new, uh, on an old hole because if you see how deep this hole is, you're actually stopping your drilling motion, the sides of it is, and because it's making contact and it slows you down, it doesn't work as well. The other thing, like I was saying with the, uh, you wanna use your whole hand momentum like this right here. A lot of people do this, you know, the short stroke and you wanna go the complete with your uh, hands and it makes it a lot easier. But the hand drill, you know, is permanent fire making technique. Um, would I rely on it? Never. Uh, this is one of those skills like, you know, I'm former military. So if I ever got down to, when, if I was deployed, if I ever got down to rubbing sticks together, I have really failed my mission and uh, lack preparation. So, you know, if you're a prepared individual, you won't wind up ever having to do this. Is this good to practice and know how to do? Yes, but it's just something that I wouldn't rely on. And it's good to know as a backup, but let it be a backup. But uh, if you got any questions or comments about this video, drop them below. And uh, please check out BlackScoutSurvival.com for more tips and tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching.